my name is Ash Prasad. I am VP product at DNN Corp. And today we're going to talk about uh, DNN platform anatomy. Uh, we're going to mostly talk about the source code, uh, where all the source code is and how, to structure, how the source code is structured, uh, what are some of the packages out there in DNN. It's at so, several places. So my, my goal here today is, is to let you know what is what. And then maybe when you go home, you can try to compile a few things and see whether you can go, how far you can go. Because things have changed now since, uh, I think, 9.0. Uh, things there, there has been source code into a couple of places. I want to make sure that people understand where they are. So that is the goal. I uh, want to thank the sponsors, uh, DNNXS, so many of those. So without those, this event wouldn't be possible. And like I said, our agenda for today is uh, we're going to start with uh, where we're going to find all the release details. Uh, so there is a, there's a place where we can go and get it. Uh, there's something new that happened was the archives. We recently put an archive somewhere on, on our GitHub and uh, put everything from version 1 to 9. So we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, we'll talk about where, where else you can find uh, our DNN product, like Azure Marketplace, uh, DNN uh, Web App Gallery. Although not a lot of people use it, but I, I thought I will still mention it so we know what we're looking at. Uh, not all of them are as important. Uh, there, we'll, we'll talk about the NV Quick site. We actually have the person who does that. Uh, we'll talk about the nightly builds of DNN. That happens every day. So I think that's important that people know that. If you have submitted a bug fix, how you can actually test it out and get the packages. Uh, so that's all. That's been there for many years now, but uh, it's important that we talk about it so you guys know. Uh, we'll talk about NuGet. I don't know how many how many of you guys know NuGet. Uh, okay, it's good, good. So we'll we'll talk. This is a complicated thing, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how the source packages that we ship with every release, how we what, what we do it, what does it contain, uh, how you can use it to actually troubleshoot your sites. Uh, we'll also talk about how the source is structured on GitHub. So it's a lot around source source code. I'm not going to actually go into the Visual Studio and show you a whole lot because that requires more time. But so we'll, we'll be at a high level today. So the first of all, where where do we find all the all the details about the previous releases? So we have up on our doc center. And by the way, as we talk, there is a whole new group that's been, that's been found. Uh, which is revamping the entire documentation center. So what you might see here is a little bit dated, and actually I'm going to click on it right now. Oops. Why well, can't click now? So how many of you have actually had a chance to look at the doc center? Have you, some of you? So this project has, has been around for, I, I think I'm going to say about two years now. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, do I turn it off? Anyways, don't, don't bother. So yeah, so this document, documentation center has been around for a long time. And what we do here is that anytime we do a release, we, we list them. Uh, we have the version number. We have uh, release notes, uh, the, the place where you can go and get. We actually don't have 9.2 here yet, so that, that's what we're going to have to go and fix. But uh, you can actually go and take a look into everything, that recent ones, the, not the older versions, uh, 7.0 upwards uh, to, to the last one. So that's good information. The next up we're going to talk about is, uh, I think this is a new product uh, project that we actually took uh, and uh, David had been championing that is that uh, so early as you know DNN was on Codeplex and Codeplex is shutting down uh, and we had all the old builds back in, in that system so so we're thinking what to do with it where I mean, there has to be some place where you can go and just grab it so we're kind of working through it so what we decided was that we'll create some repository on our public github and have uh, have all of those uh, just copied up there. As you can see here, is that we have repositories with their names like 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, up until the 9x. So you don't have to look around. 
uh, or hunt for any any of the package we, we've got pretty much everything right David I think we've got yes. pretty much everything now some of the older stuff may not have everything in there I guess the all we, we've got everything yeah so so yeah we'll, we'll go a little bit more uh, deep into that but actually I have a blog here that I want to bring it up uh, David did a blog on it uh, so you can more than welcome to go and read his thoughts about it Ash, we should also say that if anybody in here wants to blog about any various subject, we're happy to configure your blogging access. Exactly, yeah. So, and hey guys, you know, feel free to comment and question anything we want this to be an interactive session. Right, so uh, I know we're a little bit like behind now. We've got 40 minutes to go, but uh, if you have any questions, bring, feel free to bring it. Uh, bring up here, and as Clint said, yeah, more than welcome. We are actually asking people to come in and, and, and do blog. And all of a sudden, if you go back like three months, there's been a lot of blogs. People, whatever they feel like, they're so passionate about DNA, they're blogging here, and we actually encourage you to do that. So, so yeah, so he's, he's actually, you know, saying leading by example, and he's just saying that, hey, he did it. He did something. It was, you know, it might not have been a, he didn't really commit a code per se, he didn't really do a product, but anything you can do. This is still a big contribution, but what he's trying to do that you have to start somewhere. And as a simple thing as just putting together the source code into one place, it goes a long way. So uh, we highly encourage you to do that. So there's a blog about it. Uh, go ahead and uh, go check. It also has links to all of those archives. Uh, I'm going to show actually a couple of pictures here as to how these are live uh, on our GitHub. And then we, we can go and take a direct look into it. So as you can see, we have for seven version 7. Uh, there are lots of releases we've done on 8.0. We've had a few releases and 9, we're still, we're still on 9. Uh, so they're all, they all have their own folders and you can go in. And for example, if you want to go into uh, 9.2, you can see you have various files. So simply click on it, you can download it. So you've got source packages, you've got install package, you have uh, symbols file, you have upgrade package and just all there consolidated one place. So that's a, that's a pretty good thing. The next, I don't know how many of you guys actually use this web app, uh, web app gallery. Anybody use it? No? Yeah, yeah actually, we might, we might actually discontinue it if nobody's using it. I, you know, it's actually a pain on our side to go ahead and, <laughs> and publish to so many places. I don't think we have published it because it still says 911. Uh, we haven't really published it, so we might, yeah, we'll see it. Again, these are a few things that we might actually hand it over to the community. Uh, we're looking into, we're in our, in our CAG meeting called Technology Advisory Group. Uh, we're actually talking about all of those that we are, we're looking to, uh, or actually the community has been saying that can we take over some of your release process? And we're saying why not? You know, as long as there is a well-documented process and people are willing to do it. Uh, so we'll, we'll do it. Uh, so it's like we'll talk with the community and if we feel that people are using it. Uh, they that if you disable and you can discontinue that, there are some places like, for example, the Azure Marketplace that will disappear from, from there. For, from itself, right? So yeah, we, we may or may not know all the connections. So we're actually going to talk about the next is the uh, Azure Marketplace also. And, and that's also, I think it's a little bit dated, but that's another place where we, where we also uh, push a packet so you can deploy directly from, and uh, you know all that, right, David? So what we're actually, you know, talking about that, so we're, we're working with, with Michelle as well a little bit to see what we can do on our cloud package so we have more optimized packages for the cloud. Right now, it's pretty much the same package that's, that's the platform that runs on the cloud. And ideally, if you're running something in the cloud, you want to have something optimized for the cloud. The same tools, they might work as is on the cloud, but uh, there are so many new tools available which are more efficient and which are more designed for cloud. And there's a whole new kind of movement going on, uh, which is called as cloud native CN, right? Cloud native. DNN is not cloud native. So cloud native means you're actually building for the cloud. We're not there. We maybe sometime in future will be there, but there are so many tools available. So. Uh, we're trying to run the same DN on the cloud. It may not be as efficient, so we're looking into uh, leveraging. So if you're running on Google Cloud, for example, are there any tools from Google that you can use to make it run better? If you're running on AWS, can you leverage, for example, the queue mechanism to sync cache between different uh, nodes? 
Uh, likewise on Azure, uh, they, they have uh, service bus and, and things like that. Can we leverage those? So as part of the technology group, we're going to be looking into some of those. But this is one place where we have, uh, you can go ahead and download DNN straight on Azure just by clicking a few buttons. The next up uh, is actually uh, a tool that David has. Have you guys heard about, about this tool in Europe? Do people use it? Like raise your hand, a few people? OK. When was the last time you used it? Last week, okay. So is that most is that mostly for development, or is that uh, you, guys, you guys use it somewhere else, or? I use it to spin up test sites. Test sites. on my local machine. That's good. Yeah. So that's also a pretty uh, popular tool now, and you know, that's why I'm calling it out here. And thanks, David, for maintaining it and running it. So if not, if you've not played with it. Uh, go ahead and download it from nv, nvquicksite.com. And uh, you want to say a few things, David, about the tool? It's open source and it's on GitHub, so please contribute. Yeah, <laughs> don't complain. <laughs> you can roll up the sleeves and win his forms. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it downloads directly from our GitHub repository? or? Yes, you, yeah. there are releases there as well. And then uh, what I was saying about our nightly build, I think uh, as Andy was saying that we, we encourage pull request and, and we will be. But the way to actually verify once your pull request has been done is to, is to download <coughs> the builds. And we publish builds on our website. It's, so if you search for DNN nightly build, you're going to get here. I'll make sure you click on it. It goes from our build servers directly up into this location and as it says nightly builds here nightly builds and if you search for just dnn nightly builds you'll find it as well All right so download dnn nightly builds and what you would get here is an install package and also a source package just click on it downloads and then you can you can install it and play it give your feedback so that's directly from our build server and by the way we're actually working with the community to further optimize it and we're right now our build server is sort of managed by DNN core uh, but the platform version we're looking to have it managed via .NET foundation so as, as Andy had said in the morning that uh, DNN is part of .NET foundation so what that means is that we are going to be able to leverage some of their build infrastructure to run some of some of our own open source stuff. So we're gonna be actually be able to run our full pipeline of the inner platform on .NET Foundation. So we're still looking at it. Uh, it's not done yet, uh, but once that is done, that this will be also wired through that. Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, and what include uh, really the, the night night votes, which um, branch on of GitHub or so? Yeah, so that will be uh, that will be so there is a link here to say browse commits on github uh, hopefully it works so yeah it goes to the development branch so it is on so whatever is the last commit uh, so for example the last commit is june 1st uh, so there would be a build for that so yeah it's so a it's branch. a development branch yeah so the so the, the the way we do these things is that generally a pull request is done when it gets reviewed it gets merged into the into the development branch as soon as it merged, uh, there is a build product pipeline that downloads it, compiles uh, packages, unit test, automation test, and all of that. And, and once things pass, it uploads it to to this particular location. And then it's, it's probably take an hour or so uh, for the builds to completely come out, and, and then it becomes available. Uh, but yes, it is uh, it is bound to the development branch. I will tell you also that while we're talking about the branch is that we you click on it, uh, lots of branches here. Uh, we, we want to release the older branches if something is not being, well, when I say older means, you can see some of the, some of the branches are with, uh, are you able to see it well? It's a little bit faded. You can see from the back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. It's blue. <laughs> so, so I'm going to actually make it a little bigger. So, if you look into release, 
So all the previously released uh, branches are here. So you can go and download that particular code as well. But we'll talk about the code in just a few minutes, how to actually get to the right code. But uh, yeah, the, so the nightly build is not wired to any of these releases. It is wired to the development branch, which is the default branch. We also have a master branch. Do we I have, to, I have to go and check? Yeah, master branch is there, but we are no longer maintaining that. I don't know, yeah, it's 2015. We'll probably get rid of that. Um, yeah, the development branches where the actual, the, the recent, most recent uh, development activity happens on that branch. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. Now this is, this is one of the sort of the complicated part about this whole Microsoft ecosystem about uh, NuGet. Are you guys consuming any of DNS NuGet packages through NuGet? Okay, okay, some of you guys. Okay, All right. so as you can see here, we've got about ninety-eight thousand packages downloaded. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it's as well as it's widely used actually. And if we don't upload the the DLLs in a timely manner, people do complain. And with the with the company purchase and, and how people were changing stuff like that, we're, we had some issues with the uh, access and, and whatnot. So we, we have everything back on. Uh, we have access to all of that, and we actually recently updated this to 9.2 is binary. So what this is is that if you're doing a module development or any place where you're consuming DNN, you don't want to you don't want to keep a copy of the .dot new DLLs like .dot new .dot DLL. Uh, website DLL or, or, or any of those, you can simply link your Visual Studio to to say go get this particular version of, of this DLL. It will it is it is wired to get it from uget.org. That is Microsoft's default location. Uh, so we do have some stuff here as well. So we'll take a quick look into. Ash, uh, uh, in former times, there was uh, a few errors, uh, bugs in the configuration of the NuGet files. Uh, uh, where where uh, it is defined? Is it also the def uh, the config files for NuGet is also defined in uh, on GitHub or is it hidden? I never. It's actually in GitHub itself. Good question. I have to double check. There are dot NuGet script file. I have to go and find where they are. But uh, uh, I do know that yeah. I think yeah, see all of these spec files. Do you see? Okay. Yeah, so let me open one of them. Like for example, core dot uh, spec, and uh, yeah, you can. If there is a problem, go ahead and submit a pull request. But I don't believe that there is a problem now. It's all been fixed. Um, the licensing and the icons and all of that, the description and what this contains. So if you feel, and also if you need to add another file in here, let me make it a bit bigger so you can see it. So if you need to add another another new get package that you feel that it should be there, we can, you know, we can work as a community and submit a pull request, and we can. But it will, yeah, I think it will be automatically picked up once you submit a pull request because it looks for all the new spec files. So, so that's the new get. Yeah. So yeah, you can actually modify and add, add more to it. Uh, so, but I would still want to spend a few minutes into the new get uh, take a look into the side uh, as a group. So we have a bunch of packages here: dot new dot core, dot new dot web, web API, web client instrumentation, web MVC, MVC. There's a deprecated one as well. The one that is sort of uh, unique here is this dot new dot bundle. This is something we created for own, our own convenience at DNN Corp. That this, if you if you reference this bundle, it has all of those DLLs in just one go. If you don't do it, then what we notice that if you reference each of these NuGet packages uh, individually, the build system takes a long time to sort this out. So when I say long time, it's like two minutes. And when we have developers like committing code and you know. It, any, any minute or half, even half a minute that you can save from build process, that helps. Otherwise, it takes you, because you have to go search for it and downloads and whatnot, so 
we said we created a bundle which is uh, just one file with lots of uh, lots of DLLs. It's more for convenience, so you can take advantage of it too. Uh, but if you don't want that, then you can take uh, take the files individually <coughs> too. So I know NuGet is a bit slow. Any question on the NuGet side? Okay. So now we're going to talk about the source packages. Uh, so what we'll go into is so when we release a product, it is released via GitHub. So how do we release a product uh, for the DNA platform? Um, you know, after all the testing has been done and if we're, we're happy that this product is good to go, we we do a blog. We do a blog about it, and we of course you know talk about that on the on the Twitter and whatnot. We let everybody know in the community. Uh, but the end result is that we go into GitHub and we actually upload files here and we create a release. And part of that release process is several of these files. It's like install file, source file, symbol file, upgrade packages. And this is where our customers like yourself, you, this is the place for you to come in and download it. Uh, some of those, the web gallery, those are automatically uploaded. But if you want to manually download it, this is the main place to go and download Do you guys all familiar with this place? Is that is that where you mostly download your packages from? That's good. So one thing I do want to call out here is that now I'll get into this a little bit in just a couple of minutes how the repositories are structured. So anytime you do a release, whether you tell GitHub or not, it creates uh, this source package here at the bottom. And this is not to be used uh, anywhere. I think we put a put a note somewhere that this package is not to be used. What it is is that it simply does a zip of the current source code and puts it here. The real source package is this guy. And I have one downloaded and we're going to take a look into that. Uh, why and how it is different from uh, uh, from from the package that, uh, that the other source.zip file is. Anybody want to guess like what the difference might be? Yeah. Uh, you already include the other uh, um, repositories. Like it's good. I don't have any, anything to give away, but yeah, that was the right answer. <laughs> 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 yeah, because now, so uh, we'll get into that. Actually, why don't we jump into that? Uh, so I'll give you the, the theory behind. So. Earlier, we used to have one dot big repository for dot new. And me, I was looking at the engineering and my team, the entire team at DNA Core. We said, this platform code is the whole repository is so important. And people come in and commit code for even trivial things there. And me and my team, we don't necessarily know. When I say people, means anybody, how critical that change is. Right? Even for a small, like, a ResX file, the commit goes into the same repository to a severe bug that goes to the same repository. So we said that anytime, we, if we do a major development, the next major development, we're going to do that on a separate repository. It was kind of a controversial decision uh, whether to do that or not. So when we did the persona bar development, we said we're not going to do any work on the DNN platform repository. We can actually do the persona bar outside of that because anytime you do a brand new development, there's lots of changes going on, lots of commits going on, uh, and uh, it just makes me very uncomfortable uh, that on the main stable product, a lot of commits are going on. Right? If the product is stable, like mature, like DNN, we wanna we wanna have changes only which are really relevant and important. And if something is an active developer and a lot of code is going on, it's very hard to keep up. It was did somebody go in that commit, make a change into the core as well? In the down need got the other. It's just too hard to say that we said, let's keep the platform at a stable place. We will do stuff that is necessary. Any bigger ticket item like persona bar, we would do it outside. So we actually created a bunch of uh, a repository for that. and uh, But that created some problem as well, because now if you are in a platform as a package that we ship, the one that you install, you can't build it from one repository. It's kind of branched into four or five. And that's a bit of a challenge, and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about it. 
so that people are aware where what is what is where and so you go home you know, play with it a little bit and try to compile and see if you're able to build a full DNN website or not so let's continue our discussion on, on the source package so yeah so you said the source has many things so when you ex when you extract the source package you actually see four files here four folders here there is uh, the platform the one at the bottom this is the main platform source code the one above is a pb.lib is the is the persona bar library and then pb.extension ext is are the extensions and then edit bar uh, edit bar is another component that we also decided to keep that separate so there are like four components now into the platform and and those are all separate uh, for a reason as i explained But also, in order to help you that, so when you download the source package, we don't, don't want you to go and compile everything, like all the extensions. So what we did was that we took a little, just to make your life a bit easier, we, in the source package for the platform, we put in that pre -comp or the comp compiled modules in there. So that you don't have to go and compile all the persona bar one by one. It's just all in one place. You compile the platform in the release mode, your site is there, you can simply install from there. Make sense? You following what I'm saying? Yeah, you have a question, ask me. I'm more than happy to, to dig more detail into, uh, dig into it and give you more details. So we'll take a quick look into how, what are some of the key repos out there on our platform. I don't know if you can see that well from back. Uh, so we have pinned, actually I'm going to go directly to the site so you'll probably be able to see better. So we, what we've done is that we've pinned, uh, there is GNN platform, this React common, I'm not covering this in this, today's talk, but it's a uh, front end, there's a whole, you know, have you guys, anybody done any React development here? Have you, okay, good. have you actually used some of the common components for DNN? No? You know? Oh, you, yeah, okay, David knows that. So, yeah, so we, again, that's another set of areas where we need to do some more education because there are like 30 controls already built there, and you can go ahead and take advantage of those things like tree views, uh, drop down, folder picker, file picker. There's, there are common components, all stuff that. By the way, are you guys using 9.0? How many of you guys are using 9 and above, or 9 or above? Okay, it's good. So, Persona, why are you using the first for manager? What do you think? How do you like you like it? Or? I like the prompt. You like the prompt? Okay. Good. Yes. I don't like it. There's some bugs in there, though, but I'm, I'm keeping my eyes open now and hoping to see. Yeah, that's the version one that, that, that came out. And that was a very good for community contribution. Although we did have to do some refactoring there once we got the contribution. Uh, but uh, that, that's the initiative came from the community, and the bulk of the code was actually given by the community. So that's that's good. Good. So that is going to be the admin interface for DNN for the times to come. We're not we're not looking to to change that. Although there's some uh, bugs there, but perhaps we're looking into having give, to, to give you a maximized uh, persona bar experience. Uh, so you can actually maximize the whole persona bar to take the, to the full screen. Right now, it is only available to a fixed width. Uh, we're still talking about how we're going to do that, and uh, because what we also notice is that it does a lot of kind of opening up, closing down, and it, it could be quite frustrating. So there are some 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 issues there, but in general, uh, one of the one of the challenge that we're trying to solve with this new admin experience was that. Any time in the past we've tried to make changes to the admin area, it will always interfere with the skin, the skin behind. So people, depending on the skin that you have, the UI will be either squished, too bad, uh, you know, stretched out, the buttons will look funny. Uh, you can't get any consistency. So we said the persona bar that we're doing, we're going to do it as an iframe. So it has no dependency on, this, on the <clears throat> page behind. And uh, so you can stand it up independent of, uh, of however you have customized it. So that's why Persona Bar, no matter what, is going to be the same on each site, each DNN site. It's going to work, right? If it works out of the box, 
on the on a brand new install is going to work on any of the site unless and we have not heard anybody or very, very few people where persona bar doesn't load and there's probably an error somewhere but once it loads i mean 99 percent of the time it loads or 99.99 percent once it's there it's it is the same experience you get uh, so that was the reason why uh, uh, we kind of split that uh, but all the code for the persona bar is in the react common the common components are all there, so that's an important repository. I know people have not warmed up much to React yet, at least not in the DNN community. Uh, it is quite popular otherwise. It's, it's backed by, by uh, Facebook, right? You guys know that? It's backed by Facebook, so it's quite popular otherwise. Uh, so, these are, so these are the main repositories there, and there's also one more repository for edit. We've not pinned it because it's not as important. Uh, over here. So again, coming back to just to reiterate, the platform is where the main source code is. This is the old school, your dot and dot library, dot dot and web, anything like version eight and stuff. So in version nine, the administration for version nine is in the in the library, DNN experience library, this guy or the extension. So you could, as a developer, you could build extensions. The Persona Bar is extensive, extensible as well. Uh, there is a framework that is that is available to give you many services. Uh, you can take advantage of that and build your own extension. So, so again, separate. But when you're installing, when you're trying to compile DNN, you need to have all of those in one place so that your site could, uh, could be built. So again, I want to just talk a little bit about the, the library. I just said that there is this Persona Bar library. It provides the permissioning. It provides the extensibility. It provides localization, several utilities. It provides menu. And all the features are built on top of that. So when I say features, means you, you on the Persona Bar, you, you see the users, you see roles, you see pages, you see assets. Each of these are one extension built on, the, on that library. And if you want to have a custom, I know some people have built custom, I can't remember who did that, but they have built some custom extensions and so they have their own menu, sub-menu, and they have their own admin experience in there. You can do that too. Any questions so far? So yeah, so we talked a little bit about the the brand branching here, but I will say one more thing. Again, this is this is going to confuse uh, you for a bit because when we talk about separate repository, the theory behind that is that a repository should be independent of the other. In other words, which means that it should have a have a different release structure or release strategy. Although when we release DNN platform, they're all released as one package, 921, 9220, 911. But the repositories, the way we said that, we're going to have separate versions for those. Because it doesn't make sense to have the persona bar move to 9.0. It's just a brand new 1.0 product. It doesn't make sense to call it 9.0, right? So. Uh, so that's why each of these are at different releases. Uh, so the platform would be nine point something. Uh, the persona bar library is going to be one version, and the edit bar could be another version. So the, when I started this conversation, I said there is a reason why you can have the source package and why you need the source package. The main reason is that you have you don't have to once you have the source package, it has the right versions for all the other repositories at the time when the builds were done. So if you need to go troubleshoot something, you can go to the GitHub and go to that branch, but it's going to be a lot of figuring things out. You're better off, so if you ask a hey, customer, what's your site? What version is your site on? 911, 90, whatever that may be, just go to the releases area of GitHub. Uh, walk, walk you through again. So. GitHub, DNN software, go to the platform, we got 95 releases, so ask the release number and whatever the release might be, 
uh, pick that you release and download the source package. When you download the source package, you're going to get something like, just going to open that up. So this is the package that I've downloaded. Now, this is how it looks like. So within DNN platform, this is your old school DNN platform. Here's the edit bar. It's the library, an extension. So still a lot of files here, but uh, it's, it's all put into one place. So I have a quiz for you. Uh, what is a symbol package? What's a symbol When do you use it? <laughs> okay, a little bit more. Uh, for logging, to get better, better error messages. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think so. I think I, that's why I asked that question. I don't know how many. It's just okay to not know. I mean, you you you're trying to answer. I think some of you did really well. So the symbols package is sometimes uh, when you install DNN uh, or run DNN, you see an exception, right? Something's throwing up, uh, you know, yellow screen of death or whatever, but it doesn't tell you the line number where the exception is happening, because the the moment you tell that, hey, I'm getting an error, the developer you tell, send to a developer say, I don't know what it is. I mean, yeah, I I can guess, but is there any way I can get the line number? So in that case, in that case, you. You go ahead and say that, go ahead and install this symbols package. So this is also, just like in DNN, it's an extensible thing. It's a package, it's an installation package. So you, you ask your customer to go ahead and install it. They will install it, it will require the site to restart. So you now have the symbol packages on your system. And when an exception happens, Microsoft, like the .NET, is going to give you the line number of the exceptions, the exact line number of the where this exception is happening. Now if you have that, now and you also have a source code so you can exactly tell, oh this is a null pointer exception or whatever. Uh, it's uh, you know you're dividing by zero, this is the variable. So so that's uh, so that's the purpose of uh, the symbols package. The docs package uh, anybody knows what a docs package is? So docs package is uh, is the old school, is that called a CHM file or? Mm. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so, some of you guys know. So this is, we're still shipping that, so we're looking to, I know Peter and, and you guys are looking, working on it, right? Do you have any update on, on how the project is going? Uh, it's going well, I mean, we're, we're getting close to finalizing tooling and really trying to get a flow for what the document formatting and all that's gonna be. Uh, or the style that so that we really open it up to other people to contribute. Right, yeah. So you can say that, I mean, so we, so these are the, these are the files, these are the help files that are part of the product that, that automatically get generated, which nobody, none of you guys use it. So we might actually remove it in future. So that's why I'm trying to ask some of these questions to see if you guys use it, if you guys know about it or not, so that, any carrying any of these packages is a lot of burden on us. Anybody who is managing it, you want to make sure that it's good because we have tested. If if you're not using it, then might as well check it out, right? So, Sebastian. I have one question regarding the symbol files. If you upgrade the and do they get deleted automatically because it means that they they don't match anymore, right? I have to go. Yeah. I, I don't know, I don't think so. So what, what we say is that to our customers, when our customer, we say that actually uninstall it. Yeah. We, after the problem is diagnosed, um, you know, I actually go ahead and get rid of it because it's not recommended to have those symbol packages uh, in the bin. It's only to troubleshoot it. So that's, that's a good point, that they will be out of sync. And it, it, won't, it won't give an error or so, but it will be out of sync. Yeah. Ash. So what's the lowest version that uh, the symbols uh, package ships? What, the lowest? The lowest DNN version. Oh, uh, 
it's been there for a while, yeah, right? Seven, yeah. it's, it's six or seven. Six or seven, yeah, it's been there for a while. So if you have older sites and if you run into that issue, but because it's a package. If you have older sites, you should just upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, there you go, even better. <laughs> but yeah, so. So yeah, I mean, that's one thing that in the end we believe in having these things as simple as possible, right? That's why it's an installation package. It's, it's a brilliant way to do it. Um, so. Is that, uh, is the documentation, like, is it different documentation that we have on your website? Yeah, stuff? this guy is a, does anybody remember the link to that? It's a CHM file. It's like the old. The contents of the old the, windows. Windows. the The content is vastly different. What it does is that it's, it's just an API list of all the classes, oh, okay. and the API is like generated from the code. It's got no like a editors. Yes, it's not end user. It's not end user friendly. It's a developer. It's it's not even developer friendly. It's just a list. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think I'm really looking. I'm really excited for the doc project because you know we have when our remote customers we ask for it and we, and we don't have a lot of documentation. Um, so hopefully this will set the stage for everybody. So we're really excited about that. So sorry. Yeah. What is this um, documentation and the class basis? What you write with XML comments over the methods. Yeah. Uh, is it included in the uh, NuGet packages? I don't think so. When I download the NuGet packages with the URLs, and I don't have the IntelliSense uh, comments uh, in my code completion, uh, it's not that useful for me. You so it is. is it so it is supposed to be, unless the 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 actual method doesn't have the. Uh, you know, it doesn't have the Excel I'm comments. Not, I'm not on a present sure at the moment, so I'm... I'm quite sure that if the comments, uh, they should be... Uh, okay. So there, there, are, there are comments when I uh, view the code at GitHub. <laughs> but I'm, I'm at the moment not 100% uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, it should be there, right? Because yeah, it's, okay, it's, 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 it's just baked in. Not to uh, yeah, it's baked uh, into uh, the DLL, right? It's baked into the DLL, so it should be able uh, to okay. parse it, yeah. I thought maybe it's stripped around to... No, no, there's no intent to actually strip it down, but that's... Okay. Uh, yeah, let, let us know what you find if you oh, want to try it again. again and then. Yeah, let us know what you find. Yeah, of course. Okay, that's good. Anybody else have any other questions? So that's pretty much concludes my presentation, guys. Hope you liked it. Okay. Thank you. Ten, ten, right? Ten. I am done. I have people have any questions. I'm happy to. I was wondering. I, 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 it's the, the presentation um, you were giving. Uh, in the notes, it said you were going to show us how to get it running on Visual Studio. Yeah, my so I had. That's what I was waiting for. I think most people. So I'll do actually a video. I ran into some issues on my machine. I'll do a video and, on how okay. to do it and okay. post it okay. after. Yeah. <laughs> but tell us about the issues you ran into. Maybe in the You mentioned before uh, if we're using uh, React Component. Yeah. Uh, I would like to really use that, but. How can we use that? I mean, the, the documentation for that, or is there any good explanation somewhere how to use that? I don't know. I think that probably the. the just checking the, how the Persona bar um, uh, has been built, you know? Yeah, but. See the example by example, and just. That's the other question. I would like another session on how the DNN. Uh, how the DNN. Uh, personal art works. How you made your uh, component for the uh, personal art? Because there is a lot of things in there that make quite a bit difficult to understand the flow of the of the code. Yeah. Yeah. So we we actually have a blog series on that. I don't know if you you've got a chance to look into it. it was done by me, another person.
I could send you some links. So we do talk about how to like get there are modules, there are template modules available to uh, to get going. There are sample modules, so we'll talk about that. You have to look for that, uh, where the source code is, but I feel like that's some good documentation on how to use the React component would be very important. So d diving in React.js persona bar extension, adding a React.js app to persona bar, uh, extending the persona bar, persona bar architecture. So here and then, so these are five, these are few that I showed, right? And I'm going to see one more here. So look for this guy. Yes. Not sure why it's so slow. Wi-Fi is slow. What? Wi-Fi is slow. Wi-Fi is slow, right? Yeah, well. Everyone stop downloading. Nope. Don't install Windows Studio now. So using common components outside, well, outside of the persona bar. See, there's that's one. Working with common components in the persona bar. So it's actually, we do have a blog on it. So you can go and take a look. We're calling an extension, existing web API from the persona bar. So we did, some, some, of, some of the people in community have done development on the persona bar, but not too many. I think our, most of our developer community is still on the web form side. Some are on the mobile. People have, have started to use, well, actually a lot of people have used Web API. But on the front end side, I think they're still quite behind. Do you think that impacts your decision uh, or retrospect on choosing React? Uh, the other option would have been Angular, right? right? So that would have been equally harder. <laughs> from, a, from a transition perspective, like if you're if you're used to doing, thank you. If you're used to doing, if you're used to doing like web form jQuery knockout, it's it's quite different regardless. Like even Angular is going to be. You, you feel that Angular, the new Angular is easier. It's, it's much easier to comprehend than React. You know, just in general. It, it depends. I mean, from a camp to come from, I guess. I was just curious if, it, in retrospect, that's telling of the choice. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can give you the, the perspective why we decided to go with React JS. Yes, at that time, we, at that time, we're looking to do either React or Angular. Angular JS two was still in beta, and we didn't want to. We don't want to. We didn't have time to wait for that to come out, and we didn't want to change a beta product. Yeah, so I, the, think, I think if you would have gone with Angular over the past two years with all the different Angular versions being mm -hmm. released, there would have been a massive undertaking to so with, one with all the Angular releases. Yeah. Two, three, five is the same. Uh, so what? Oh, it's the same. Two, three, five is the same paradigm, but it's like the same way of looking at Yeah, at our ESW companies, mm -hmm. their choice is also Angular. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, they, so they it means that we're switching now. What? Oh, it means that we're switching now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I, have to, if I have to get something rewritten in yeah. in, in our engineering, that they would prefer to do that in, in Angular because that's where all the patterns are. There were lots of reusable components and whatnot. So. And you could build a persona extension of it using Angular. That's just what you call components. Right. You, you could do that, yeah. Oh, really? And, and also, is the. 
right now the persona bar is pretty much baked in, right? It's not really, well, it's, it's a separate component, but it's always loaded. C can you, would it be easier to have an option to say, okay, I want to load either the, the old style persona bar or something else? Because then people can start working on an Angular version of it and then you can switch between the two easily. Yeah, so persona yeah. bar is, is built on an anchor with uh, in the DNN where you can you can set what control bar you want. So it used to be icon bar, control bar, and persona. Now it's persona bar. So if you want to completely get rid of persona bar, so you can make a host setting change and remove the remove that to load your own. That sounds like a good blog post. Yeah, so I know Bob like, used to do that, that, right? Like the old control. Yeah, it removes Persona Bar altogether. It just doesn't load. Mm -hmm. So, but that means you, you have no option for administration. You have no administration. Yeah. <laughs> you can have your own administration if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to rewrite all the admin modules. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but you could, but you could mm -hmm. build something Angular on top of the current okay. React. Mm -hmm. You just use the bootstrap code to to have a panel and once you have the panel you can have any way to write JavaScript, right? Angular JS but you do need a little bit of bootstrapping to mm -hmm. come to the point where your application can stand up and once it stands up you can do whatever programming That's language. Good. Yeah. I have another question for also for uh, the persona bar. Uh, if I were I try to set up a module or well I did uh, oh, and I noticed that uh, I need to uh, the uh, React components. I need to get them from a private uh, npm repository. Is it still that way, or is it now from, uh, also from npm js? Uh, no, it's not from npm js. Still from my get. Yeah, it's uh, why I can't understand that. Uh, because I, if I follow uh, your instructions. Uh, it uh, also uh, sets it globally for all my projects everywhere, uh, and it's not uh, for the current project. And all, all uh, my MPM uh, 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 packages are now uh, uh, resolved by uh, get MPM. My get. Yeah. My get. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. MyGet was the only one that allowed private, right? David, you remember that? MyGet, why did we choose MyGet, right? That was the only one that allowed private uh, registration, yeah. right? Private yeah. feed. Uh, yes. We continue to use that right now, but if community has a better idea, better ways to do it, I think we're... So why, don't you, why do you need a private key? Well, yeah. the private was for the private packages for a book, not for the... Yeah, the public one the doesn't... The public one contains all the, the rap, uh, oh, thank you. packages and, uh, and, uh, and others, right? Right. Because, because the daily bills, right, the, uh, the yeah. are, uh, pu are being pushed there. So we we should revisit that. I personally don't like that MyGet also. That's why I did not actually mention MyGet today in the talk. I, I was considering talking about that, but that itself is a confusing area, and we want to actually get rid of that. The, the whole, yeah, I think if you guys have better ideas, then we're all open for that. All right then, thank you guys.